In this educational video, we're going to discuss the importance of comprehensive hormone testing when looking at adrenal hormones. And we're going to show you a couple case studies that will really highlight that. With adrenal hormones, you're typically looking at cortisol and either DHEA or DHEA sulfate. But of course, the adrenal glands are also making hormones like androstenedione and aldosterone and some others. Historically, salivary cortisol has been preferred because it correlates reasonably well to serum-free cortisol but it's a lot easier to test several times throughout the day, which is important when you're looking at cortisol because the levels go up in the morning, as we can see here in this study, and then down throughout the day. So those are the levels of the healthy controls. When we look at the chronic fatigue patients, you can see the same sort of up in the morning and down throughout the rest of the day type of a pattern, but the levels are lower. What's of note is when they looked at these same patterns in urine, they got almost superimposable patterns for both the healthy controls and the chronic fatigue patients, meaning urine testing can be used to adequately determine the free cortisol pattern. And that's really critical because there is other uh, information available in urine testing that you can't get out of saliva that really can clear up the picture. So when we're looking at cortisol, Typically, we're looking for, you know, is the HPA axis overactive or underactive? If we see high free cortisol, we're looking at, some people might call this stage one adrenal fatigue, but it's overactive HPA axis is typically your conclusion. With low cortisol, you're typically concluding the HPA axis is underactive, and this is where uh, you can really be misled because this is not always the case with low free cortisol. So if we look at these two patients, one on the left, one on the right, and we're looking for adrenal issues, let's zone in on two things, metabolized cortisol and the daily free cortisol pattern. So you can see the daily free pattern, the reference ranges at each of the time points are in black, and then the patient result for both in red there is very low. So there's not a lot of free cortisol. When you look at metabolized cortisol, however, we're looking here to confirm this conclusion that there is insufficient cortisol production. And when we look at metabolized cortisol, you'll notice that in both cases, the numbers are in the thousands. So it represents a lot more cortisol. This is the same units as on the bottom here where levels rarely get above 100. So even in a case where they're low, they're in the thousands for metabolized cortisol. So the patient on the left is around 1800, which is much lower than the reference range limit of 2412, and then you can see the upper end of normal is 4504. So this patient in this case, yes, we have confirmed that there is in some way, shape, or form adrenal insufficiency. When you look at the patient on the right, however, that is not the case. Metabolized cortisol is actually out of range high for this patient, meaning they make more cortisol than 85% of the population, but you certainly don't get that message when you look at the free cortisol pattern. So it's very, very important to look at both when you're trying to conclude what's going on with the adrenal. So that's why this testing model, dried urine testing for comprehensive hormones, or Dutch for short, is a lot more comprehensive in terms of trying to figure out what's going on with your patient because you can look at basic hormones, androgens and estrogens along with their metabolites, and then in the case of adrenals, you're looking at that daily free cortisol pattern, but also metabolized cortisol, and you can also look at things like melatonin, um, but the patient collection is really easy, so it's a nice model for testing. So what we're looking at here is not, we're using urine testing, but it's not a 24-hour collection. It's multiple spot urine samples. Now those samples, when done correctly, for hormones like testosterone, estrogen, cortisol metabolites, they correlate well to a 24-hour collection. We're going to make the collection even easier by using dried samples. So the patient simply has to saturate this filter paper by either urinating directly on it or urinating in a cup and then dipping the filter paper and then just letting it dry. So there are four collections throughout the day which are timed so that when we test the individual samples for cortisol, we get that diurnal cortisol pattern and then we can combine them together in a weighted average to give equivalent numbers to 24-hour urine for the rest of the profile to give you something very comprehensive. The fact that we're using dried samples makes it easier, but it in no way compromises the accuracy of the results as you can see from this data, dried versus 
versus traditional liquid urine samples. So it's an easy collection. It represents a large portion of the day, which is nice because hormones tend to shift around a little bit during the day. There's more clinical information because you're not only getting cortisol metabolites, but also estrogen and androgen metabolites. And it's an improved adrenal profile. And that's really the most profound piece of it is you get this diurnal free pattern plus the metabolism picture to give you really a, a good option for overall hormone testing for both sex and adrenal hormones. So let me show you a couple case studies where I think this really highlights the clinical utility. So similar profile as we showed before. The free cortisol pattern is low. So when we look at the total for free cortisol, that's what this number here is, essentially a 24-hour urine-free cortisol. It's low. But when we look at metabolized cortisol, it's high. Now, DHEAS is also low. Now, when we look at a before and after picture, on the top you can see the results we just looked at. Low free cortisol, high metabolized cortisol. This patient was put on some sort of adrenal product to help their adrenal production. And when you look at the free cortisol pattern, it was restored to levels that are more in line with what we're expecting. A little bit on the high side in the morning, but more or less in line with what we're looking at. But in order to do that, the overall cortisol production was pushed to a point where it's nearly twice the reference range limit. Now, how we treat these patients is another conversation, but we want to know all the bits of information here if we're going to conclude confidently what's going on with a particular patient. You can see the DHEA also increased in this case by about double. So adrenal output was really increased in this case, but again, we want to know what's going on with all of these parameters. So what causes this sort of a picture? Here's another patient. Low free cortisol, so the, the total free cortisol for the day is low, and the metabolized cortisol is low. Now, this looks very similar to the other one. The reason I show this one is it had a very uh, clear reason as to why. When we inquired about this and said, you know, the, one of the uh, easiest ways to do this is if, if you're hyperthyroid. And the patient then realized they were actually taking their thyroid medication twice a day instead of once a day, inducing hyperthyroidism and upregulating, one of the consequences of hyperthyroidism, upregulating cortisol clearance, creating a situation where you're deficient in free cortisol, yet elevated in overall cortisol production. So all of those, that information was really important to figure out what was going on with this patient. Now here's a patient who's got the exact opposite problem. This patient has elevated overall levels of free cortisol, yet look at their metabolized cortisol. When we go to confirm that the cortisol production is in overdrive, it's not. Metabolized cortisol is low. This patient is hypothyroid. So their cortisol clearance is actually quite sluggish, causing an issue where the cortisol in the periphery is actually pretty elevated throughout the day, but the overall production is low, and it's a consequence in this case of hypothyroidism. Now, there are other things that play into the rates of cortisol clearance. Uh, Long-term stress can upregulate uh, cortisol clearance. Obesity can upregulate cortisol clearance. And again, the thyroid can play into that as well. But again, if we're going to understand what's going on with the patient, knowing that there are many cases where the free cortisol picture is actually not a good depiction of what's going on overall, we need this extra bit of information. Now, here's a patient where if you tested them in saliva, you would end up with a low morning level, a high level in the afternoon, and then a slightly elevated level at night. And we get the same information from our test. And we go to confirm that this overall level of cortisol is appropriate, the metabolized cortisol confirms that. The problem with this test is, is if this patient was tested in urine, in a traditional 24-hour urine, you're low in the morning, you're high at night, so the overall collection is going to be well within the normal range, whereas there is very significant dysfunction here to the diurnal pattern. So if you want to test adrenals well, you want the diurnal pattern, 
you want metabolism of cortisol as well as DHEA and we're you know looking at adding melatonin you can look at all that information in one test that's really easy for your patient and this is really the model that I think uh, provides you with the most information with again an easy patient collection so if you have information have questions on this test or would like more information feel free to reach out at info at precisionhormones.com and thank you for your time